So, wat as daar geen wit mens in Zuid-Afrika was nie? Dit vraag Federal Hapagee in haar boek, een blik op ons toenemend gepolariseerde en ras-centrische land. Hoe kom die beheptheid met witheid en selfs wit heerskapie? Waarin gaan dit alles leie? En is die idee van een nierasige reenboogland rechtig uitgedien? Inzichtkijkers ken Feryl al goed as een van ons gereelde rubriekstemme. Feryl, welcome to Inzicht. Thank you very much. So Feryl, what if there were no whites in South Africa? You know, the, the title has caused me many nightmares. Uh, friends of mine who've gone to look for the book say they feel the need to whisper it, right? And sometimes you feel the need to apologize, but not at all. I, for years, had felt like this is what I was hearing people saying that if there were no whites, if we had all the things that white people have, then our country would be fine. So I did some sums and found out that that is in fact not the case at all. Our developmental challenges are so very steep that even if you redistribute every single resource of white South Africans, it's not even going to touch the sides of where we need to go as a country. Okay, but white South Africans are still much wealthier in most cases than yes. their black compatriots. Mm -hmm. And critics of the book have argued that that is the real question, not mm. whether there should be white people in South Africa or not, there are, mm. um, but that the dispensation here is not fair. Mm. So, um, obviously, wherever I've spoken about the book or held the launches, Professor Kolela Manko, for example, took me on about that in fairly rigorous ways. And of course, I would be blind not to see the racial wealth gap. But I very much felt like our narrative wasn't going a lot further than that. It wasn't looking at state power or fiscal power, or how do we begin to alter those? And I was very interested in doing the sums to say, okay, what if we have this massive redistributive effect? And that really has altered me as a journalist. How big has the redistributive effect been since 94? It has been significant if you look at the development of our tax system, much, much more progressive taxation. If you earn 6,200 or lower, largely the black working class, you're not going to pay any tax. So that's been the key method of redistribution. Land has been an absolutely dismal governing failure uh, to change the numbers significantly. So 67%, I think, is the correct figure um, of, of white ownership and, and classified in very many many different ways. Um, where I think we have failed miserably is corporate power, I don't think, has risen to the challenge of making more black people into the professional class, middle managers, senior managers, and the very important CEO level. So that's where the redistribution hasn't really taken place. And yet you dispute in your book the president's claim that only 3% of the JSE mm. stock exchange is owned by black South Africans. Mm. I think you and I have serially done that story in rapport and City Press to show the research periodically done by the JSE to show that that 3% number is not true. The latest figures came out um, just as the book came out and they show that it's probably closer to 18% if you take uh, figures of uh, indirect holding. You and I have pensions, unit trusts, we also hold assets on the JSE. The biggest gainers have been foreigners who now own 39% um, of our exchange. For also this narrative of progress, yes. which um, media across this country have been sharing with readers and, and listeners for many yes. years, this narrative you show in your book is not shared, is not, there are many young South Africans who mm. don't buy this story, mm. that there's been significant progress mm. or sufficient progress. What w were you told when you had these roundtable mm. discussions mm. Uh, during your research for your mm. book? Even though I was, I used the research in the roundtables to say this is where we've come to, and they were all young black people. This is where we've come, this is what we've done. I'm not saying things are perfect, but this is the progress achieved. I think in people's lives, and largely because they're a young black middle or professional class, they're feeling very disempowered where they find themselves. And also I found incredibly stressed. Um, I think the, 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 the burden on a young black person in the workplace to care for a whole range of people um, is so significant, not a big enough part of our discourse, then how are they feeling themselves at universities? We know that pretty clearly now. But also in workplaces, do they feel a sense of ownership where you spend more than half your life? Did you pick up anger? 
I picked up rage. And some of the response to the book has also been enraged. Um, and I think you've seen that at the beginning of 2015. We started it on a very violent, this and year, I no, felt, 2016, 2016 yeah. I'm sorry, uh, quite a violent and militant note. And I think you're seeing that rage. We'll probably carry it with us um, like we did in 2015. It'll be a sub-narrative of this year as well. Do you find also among this group yes. uh, that they don't accept this idea of non-racialism and of the Rainbow Nation? Mm. I suppose that's what prodded the book is I am very much a a disciple of the Mandela era. I revere the Archbishop Desmond Tutu who came up with the idea. And then I've studied non-racialism and consider myself a, try to be a practitioner, practitioner of it as much as you can. Really, I felt like a complete relic. Uh, in the book, I described myself as feeling like an aging, like, a, like an old UDF poster, because I think that idea of non-racialism is truly, truly re um, regarded as passe and kind of like Uncle Tom politics. Okay, but was it doomed from the beginning then, or did we, as a collective, as a country, yes. do so many things wrong mm. since 94 that it killed the idea? I feel... Um, very hesitant and guilty to put it in a coffin and part of the reason I wrote the book was to begin to resurface the idea of non-racialism and say here's where it is, how are those of us who are interested in it going to fix it? Because I don't think it's the simple and sorry to say I often hear it from Afri Forum and Solidarity with whom I have like a love-hate relationship is non-racialism means no employment equity, um, no black economic empowerment, we must all just kind of love each other and get on. And you don't That's agree with that? Not at all. In its classic meaning, it was always getting through the, da the difficult times, um, dealing with our past, and eventually getting to a point where I see you first as a human before I see your color. What did you think was it that d did so much damage um, to the idea of non-racialism? Because these young people, you call them enraged, mm. they reject it out of hand, some mm. of them at least. Mm. Well. I suppose the, the making of four million black middle class people has resulted in significant things and I think it uh, saw us out of one recession because people were just spending so much to make up so consumption based growth but it was nowhere near significant enough for what's needed and I've come to the understanding that at the bottom of it, if you look for an economic explanation, it's the impact of deep unemployment on a society. Of course you're going to see the kind of rage that we do see. And Feral, this is a generational thing to some extent. Um, so older South Africans of all races yes. are, feel more warmth uh, to the idea of non-racialism. Yes. But young people feel that things need to change now. Yeah. What is at the top of their list of demands? Well, I think that they were given impetus and a push by the must fall movements. So it was fees definitely. Um, I keep seeing small threats that it'll come to the workplace, but the workplace is not as easy to organize as the campus. Um, I do think the march by the EFF on the JSE last year was very interesting to me. So I'm very much carefully watching the corporate sector to see where next um, it'll show itself. Obviously the biggest battleground is social media, where I feel like that's where we're having the civil war that we didn't have. Luckily it is in the ether so we can't kill each other, but it's pretty violent. Yes, but so how representative is that of the conversation outside of cyberspace? Mm. Um, what I learned through the book is people who I thought were the zeitgeist, they are, but only in a certain circle. I have found that there are a significant number of South Africans who I believe believe that a job um, and getting by, being having your aspirations met, is far bigger than race in their lives. And that's something I'm quite keen on um, exploring for the next couple of years. Feral, do you think that without massive economic change, much yes. more than we've seen already, yes. the idea of non-racialism can be rekindled? Not at all. I, um, I think our solution, and I, I very much, I don't know when I did it, became a numbers person. I think if we have 12 million black middle class people, you take that desperation out of the burden off the shoulders of the, the existing middle class right now. And then I think you can see significant what the state calls social cohesion, where we kind of get on. But I do really believe that in our personal lives, this is what I've learned, is to try and construct lives that aren't only made up of people who look like me. So who do I 
uh, go out with? Who sits around my dinner table? How do I reach out? How do I reach out across classes and across generations? Um, if anything was my learning curve, then that is it. Eh? Feral, just lastly, yes. what is the one position of this enraged young mm. black generation which is most misunderstood mm. by the rest of the population? It's the... Um, I would say their anger was ill understood. So the thing I've loved is lots of ordinary people have written to me saying that it provided insight or a telescope into a generation that they didn't know about. And I just hope that they will begin to listen uh, more carefully to them. Ferial, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Dit was Ferial Hafferji, redacteur van City Press. Blij en geskakel, na hierdie advertenties vind ons uit precies hoe optimistisch Zuid-Afrikaners is oor ons landse toekomst.